Hey everyone, I'm Noah. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be part three of the, I guess we're going to call this the massive CGC comic book unboxing. Uh, yeah, hopefully you've seen the other two uh, videos that I've done so far. Uh, it was a total of 17 boxes that I sent off to get graded and we're doing about three boxes uh, each time. So, this will be uh, the third video that we're going to do today. And what I'd like to do uh, before we get started is to also just go ahead and give, I guess, maybe a little bit of history or a little bit of backstory on, again, how comic books had played such a, I guess, an influential role in Dungeons & Dragons. And not just the the, the stories themselves. Um, I think that we talked about Appendix N and and how you know the books and the authors, uh, and and those stories were very influential to to Gary Gygax, as he developed the the narrative and 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 the and the game. But in comic books, those lended artwork and imagery. And that was something that was a whole new layer. So as the as Gary was putting together rules, images and graphics were then going to be part of those rule sets. And so he uh, gathered uh, some illustrators, some artists to help uh, start collecting some artwork to contribute to uh, that first set of rules. And so I'd like to kind of share some of the origins of that because it's a little surprising um, if, if you don't already know where some of these uh, actually, where, where some of these pieces of artwork uh, actually came from. So the first thing I want to point out is that one artist um, by the name of Greg Bell, um, who at the time was, I guess, a teenager, I believe, um, and so still not very experienced, I would say, um, but was, uh, at the, at that time using comics as one of his ways that, uh, he was being inspired and, and influenced in, in the realm of, of artwork. So he would look at comics and find a, find a panel or, or a picture in the comic book and, use that as kind of the basis for something and then uh, either trace it or look at it and 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 kind of use that image as the as kind of the uh, foundation and then change it up a little bit um, that 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 practice was kind of known as swiping um, so I'm not going to belabor that that position but let's uh, Let's go on and just talk a little bit about what some of the actual comics were and or and the images that um, that were used uh, for for this. So first, the thing that we should talk about the most is this here. Um, this is a second printing of the uh, of the wood grain box, the original D and D, and as you can see, uh, the image that is on the cover of this is the the mounted warrior okay that or the knight on horseback um, so this particular image was actually taken from uh, from a comic book um, and you can look this up so it is actually um, strange tales uh, number 167 that's from April of 1968 if I'm getting that right um, Strange Tales at that time was a comic that was shared by both Captain America and uh, no, I'm gosh, I got I got that wrong. Um, that was a comic that was shared at that time by uh, Nick Fury, Agent of Shield, and also uh, Doctor Strange. So, uh, and and each issue would be a storyline. Um, uh, two separate storylines with with each of those two characters. So, 
from that particular comic, um, there are, I think, a total of four images that there are four images from that particular comic from St Strange Tales number 167 that ended up landing in that wood grain box. Um, and so that was the first, mm, probably, well, at least the, that image was on the first three printings and then in the fourth printing they went to a white box and so at least the the cover art got changed i think some of the interior artwork managed to, to stay the same so um let's take a look here so this is actually right here so this is a fir first printing i don't have the box but this is a first printing of the first volume which is men, men and magic and so as we said on this volume is the the knight on horseback and this is um i think the artist is dan atkins who originally drew this as part of the doctor strange uh, storyline and then and I'll, I'll find the actual, I'll find the actual comic panel and see if I can put that up. And then inside this, inside this same volume on page 16, if I can show that right there, this image over here that's titled the, the Barbarian, that is actually, um, from the same issue, that's a pose with uh, Nick Fury. And so, uh, I want to say that I think that is um, maybe, I think he's like firing a pistol or something like that. So, if we go and move to volume two, and this is also a first printing, so I'm, I'm trying to use like original source material here. If you go all the way to the back, this very last, oops, this, this very last page, this is another uh, scene or another panel from the uh, Doctor Strange storyline. And so that is also from issue 167. And then if you go to volume three, and I think, yeah, it's all the way in the back, but not on the cover, but the last, the last page, you can see that the warrior down here with the sword that says fight on, that is another Nick Fury uh, pose down here at the bottom. So, so that was four images, um, all done by Greg Bell. Greg Bell um, had kind of a uh, kind of a chunky style of of drawing uh, with a lot of uh, dark shadows uh, and heavy lines. Um, which was actually kind of common for uh, the the comic book artist at the time. So he he adopted that that style. Um, it 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 lended itself to a lot of contrast. So, but you will see that in his actual artwork that where he would um, would do things that 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 really was the style that that he adopted. Um, Greg Bell is also um, uh, famous for doing the the actual lizard logo for for TSR as well. So, all right. So there's your little bit of of history on how comic book art actually was embedded in the uh, 
the very first iteration of the Dungeons and Dragons uh, edition there. Okay, so what we're gonna open up three boxes. Uh, I'll start with another small box here. We've got a signature box, and um, I'm gonna back up a little bit. As you can see, I'm wearing <laughs> I'm wearing a Spider-Man shirt because. I think I grabbed the right box, so that tells you that I'm hoping I got the right box, that there might be a Spider-Man comic in here. If not, then, then I'll have to wear this shirt again for another day. So the signature series um, was uh, books that were uh, written with uh, Marv Wolfman. So uh, so he signed this. So here is Crisis, Crisis on Infinite Earths, nine point four. So the death of Supergirl. And again, Marv Wolfman, Wolfman signed all these. Well, that's awesome. Here we are with another issue of Crisis. This is uh, number eight, graded as a 9.8. With the Death of Flash. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome here. And uh, The Amazing Spider Man, uh, number 194, first appearance of the Black Cat. So, 9.0. That's a really good comic right there so graded really high too it's a valuable comic all right so I also had sent off some other Spider-Man comics that got signed by Jerry Conway, so I was hoping it was one of the two, so this one I, I lucked out. Um, let's see. Alright, we'll start off with something D&D. Alright. TSR's uh, work with DC Comics that was relatively short-lived. Um, Dragon Lance, first issue, 9.6. Okay, West Coast Avengers, number one, 7.0. Web of Spider-Man. This is the annual number one, 9.4. This one says G.I. Joe Special Missions 8.5.
GI Joe number 50, 8.0. Classic X-Men, number one, uh, 9.4. 9 Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, issue number 100, 8.0. surprised I didn't know about this the killing joke 9.8 I must have missed that like <clears throat> I think I told told you all before like CGC sends you a list um, like you get all the graders notes and everything like I, I don't know I sent so many of these things off that Kind of didn't really keep track of everything coming back. That's awesome. All right, so um, Detective Comics. So this is when um, Todd McFarlane um, was uh, doing Detective Comics. Batman, awesome. So this is uh, issue five five seventy six nine point six. Next one here, issue 577, 9.6. Oh, this is cool. This is uh, Batman number 407. This is a Frank Miller storyline, 9.4. sent this one off but I did labyrinth <laughs> based on the movie so right David Bowie um, 9.6 that's issue number one that was a three issue limited series Another limited series. This was a character from the, the X-Men or the New Mutants. So number one, 9.0. And then this is number four, uh, 9.4. was 15 in that box. We're going to open up one more. Oh my gosh. Alright, so this, this box I think has 25 in it.
see a lot of X-Men. I see some Spider-Man. All right, these aren't these aren't really in order of any type, so I'll just start at one end and we'll work our way to the other. So, issue one. 138, 6.0. Issue 139, 9.0. Issue 140. 8.5 Okay, number 141 It's an 8.0 This is 142, 8.5. This was a really good storyline. This was the uh, the, the future uh, storyline with the Sentinels. Issue 143, 7.5. Here's the, the rest of those Batman ones. Uh, Batman 404, 9.2. That's the uh, Frank Miller story. Here's issue 405. Yeah, 405, 9.8. Issue 406, Batman 9.6. Oh, this is a great issue here. X Men 137, 9.2. This is cool. Spider-Man uh, annual, uh, uh, giant size annual, right? No, I guess they don't call these an annual. It was just called a giant size. But it's number four. Giant size number four with the Punisher 5.0. Here is uh, Spider-Man number 200, 5.5, and Spider-Man number 168, 7.0. shape here. Here's another Spider-Man with the Punisher in it. 9.0. This is number 174. Here's Spider-Man number 190 and it's a 9.2.
Spider-Man number 201 5.0 and then the next issue Spider-Man 202 7.0 This is this says collector's item premiere issue the the Green Lantern Corps. So they must have had, I think they had a title change. Uh, this is issue two hundred and one nine nine point two. So I guess that was Green Lantern and went to become Green Lantern Corps. So this is uh, John Byrne, uh, story and artwork, Superman, uh, number four, when John Byrne did the reboot series, and Bloodsport, 9.2. All right, got some more X-Men here. X-Men 158, 8.5. X-Men number 160, 8.0. X-Men number 167, 9.0. All right. So this is the Amazing Spider-Man Annual, number 21. And that's a 9.8. Another Amazing Spider-Man, number 161, with Nightcrawler. And that's a 7.0. That was 161. This is the follow-up issue to that. Number 162 with the Punisher now in that issue. And that's a 9.0. So. All right. Went through those kind of quickly. Um, <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, again, 25 in one box, 15 in another, so that's 40. Uh, and then three of the signature series all signed uh, by Marv Wolfman. One being uh, Spider-Man with the first appearance of the Black Cat, and then two from the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, series from DC. All right. We'll do this again. That was that was number three. So probably three more to go. Thanks for watching. Take care.